Hello folks, and welcome to the Vertigo Tea Party, and a Liz Try the Sexy Brutal is developed by Cavalier Game Studios and Tequila Works. You can pick it up for Windows on Steam, GOG, and Humble. For $19.99, you can also buy it for the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One on Steam, which is where I will be playing it. It supports Steam achievements, Steam trading cards, has partial controller support, and Steam cloud support. I will have all relevant links in the description below the video, and I will be playing a free press copy that was provided to me in order to make this video. So, we're gonna hop into a game that I am not very far into. I actually beat the game, funny enough. Uh, I got so into it, I ended up finishing it. It took me, me, took me about seven and a half to eight hours to go through the entire thing. I didn't find all the collectibles and whatnot. I found a good amount of them, but not all of them. But uh, yeah, I've actually enjoyed this quite a bit so far. So, the Sexy Brutal, which I don't know if it's Brutal or Brutale, we're going to call it the Sexy Brutal, because I don't know. But um, it's a very interesting little game here. Uh, it's very time-based. It's a very strong Groundhog Day effect. The idea here is that you're trying to solve multiple murders uh, kind of at the same time, or at least you're trying to prevent multiple murders at the same time. And everything is ongoing currently. So there's all these things that are happening. These people are getting set up to get murdered. Uh, this is a little bit of setup here. This is not too much of a spoiler. I'm early in the game, so don't worry too much about this. I am going to kind of click through this so that if you don't want to know like this little bit of the the spoilerish stuff, you don't have to see it. And I do want to avoid spoilers, so this is probably going to be a fairly short video because uh, again, there's oddly enough, there's not a lot of murders to prevent, even though there's quite a few puzzles that you will need to solve. But again, I want to keep the spoilers to a bare minimum because this game revolves around a lot around figuring this stuff out yourself, figuring out how it's all going to work. So here we're figuring out the next two people we have to save. Clay Rockridge and I miss what her name was. But it is it's it is linear in that you can only save the people that you're set up to save. Here you can see the list of, we'll go back in there real quick. You can see the list of the people that you're going to end up saving. We've already saved this person. This was basically the tutorial mission. Here we're saving two people. Sometimes you save one person, sometimes you save two. But you can only save these two. You can't like skip ahead or anything like that. But eventually you will be saving them all. And it all kind of ties together in a way because like I said, if you see down here this clock, all of the stuff is going on at the same time. It's not like you're moving on to a different day. All these people are moving around doing their own thing. So let's go ahead and we're going to wind this clock. So clocks are basically your spawn points. From here, when the day's over, which is it over, it is over at midnight, you respawn at whatever clock that you're bound to, let's just say. Uh, and you can rebind by using your uh, pocket watch that you get early on in the game here. And you'll want to do this sometimes because the way that the puzzles are set up, you'll want to be closer to a certain point because, again, you only have so much time in order to, to solve it. So let's go with the basic controls here, and we're going to walk around a little bit so it's not just me talking in this room. As you can imagine, these little circles indicate areas that you can interact with. Blue is almost always just flavor text. It, like this says, the leather of the chairs is so soft, it's like gently warm butter. Uh, the green era or the green circles are doors now you'll notice how my mask well it did go red let me try to find a better example here now you notice my mask goes red that means somebody is in that room you don't want to go into a room somebody's at uh, because they it's kind of a weird situation of course they keep leaving the room but i know somewhere around here there's a room that people just stay in that we'll check into but you don't want somebody to see you because you'll kind of sort of be attacked. Uh, and, but we'll show that in just a second. A red circle shows a door that I can't get into yet. So if I try to left click, oh, see, lady comes in. She does this siren thing and her mask will fly off and come after you. And you just have to leave. If the mask touches you, you don't automatically lose. You, uh, you actually start to take health damage. I never died in the entire eight hours of playing this game. I didn't even come close. So when you walk up to a door, you can also press X on most doors and look inside. Like I can see her standing there. We can see what she says. Because of course, if you're looking somewhere, you can of course see what they say. So let's follow her. We want to see what she's doing. She's one of the people that we're trying to save. But again, we can't go to her directly. 
See, so we see her typing, but that means that we can't hear what she's typing in there. So uh, many times that you'll see people having a conversation, they'll be whispering and you'll see asterisks because you can't hear them. Or if there's a loud noise going in the background, you won't be able to hear them. And as you save people, you get their masks and their masks have special powers. So for example, the mask from the guy you get during the tutorial, he's the one who allows you to mess with the clocks. And with the clocks, you can move time forward, you can save, you can respawn there, things like that. So here's a, a, a CCTV pad, but we don't know the code. Hmm, let's try to find the code. Now, there's also cabinets like this that you can hide in, which I won't bother showing. You basically just get into the cabinet. So we cannot follow her. So we'll just go ahead and explore some more. One thing that might put some people off initially about this game is the time limit. I mentioned that you are timed, and down here, it shows how much time you have, and it shows roughly when these two are going to die. Once it hits around 10.30 to 11 o'clock, you've basically lost your chance. They're going to die. And a lot of people don't like these types of games where you're you're limited by time because they feel pressured to, you know, oh God, I've got to hurry, i got to hurry. That really doesn't happen in this game because once the day's over or on the very odd chance that you actually do manage to die, you just respawn and the day starts over anew. It's no big deal, you just do it again. It's very, very non-issue. I was never at any point was concerned, like, oh God, I've got to hurry, I've got to hurry. Now, once you understand the patterns that people follow, you do have to move quickly, like you need to move from one place to another, but they're fairly generous. There's, there was never really a time I felt like every single second mattered and I had to move from one place to the other like exactly perfectly or else I would lose. So you can see from see this guy from in here. This is like a security when mirror, one-way mirror type thing. Uh, that's just a robot, don't worry. Just a robot reaper, whatever. Whatever they decided to use that for a casino car dealer is beyond me. So let's mess around with some of the stuff in here. If we click on this. Ah, uh, the camera feed's now being shown on the screen. I wonder why that's useful. Hmm, I wonder. So again, you can kind of click around. And again, most of the stuff, most of the blue things are just uh, like, like, flavor and they turn kind of a light blue when you looked at them which is nice because you know you don't want to keep doing the same thing repeatedly here you've learned the code to activate the cctv cameras all right that was from here i actually forget that was important so that has the code for the cameras now any items that you pick up are lost when the day is over oh so apparently there was a guy there was somebody in here and i just barely missed them but that does not open the doors. So let's just wander around the, the mansion a little bit more and talk a bit more about the mechanics of the game. So here, like, I can uh, turn this camera off if I wanted to do so. You can see the camera turned off. Oh, and it dropped a card. For some reason, a playing card was on top of it. Now, these cards are just purely, like, a collectible. I think once you get all of them, there is something that you can do. But... I won't, uh, I won't uh, tell you what that is just yet. I didn't get all the cards, so I haven't actually been able to do it, but I found the character who kind of tells you what's up. So, I, again, I'm trying to show you kind of these these mechanics without, uh, without spoiling too much. I do want to kind of look around more so you can see the areas of the mansion. This mansion is quite large, and it does a pretty good job of, of keeping you limited without letting you wander too much. So you're not going to spend a ton of time wandering around this huge mansion trying to figure out the like one or two items that you need to find in order to solve the puzzle, right? They they keep you fairly limited. Now, as you save more and more people and get access to more and more of the mansion, it is possible to backtrack all the way back to the beginning. But generally speaking, you should almost never have to do that. It's very rare that I remember having to do that. And usually it was, it was pretty obvious. The puzzles have been mostly pretty easy let's see what's in this door come on go over here oh something very cold and solid is blocking my way hmm i wonder what that could be another thing to hide in let's pop up over here oh easy ah and there's a guard now they can't see now things like this where they're on a different level you don't have to worry about they cannot see you or hear you or anything of that nature 
And you'll also, what's very interesting is you'll hear things going on in the mansion. You'll hear gunshots. You'll see like that with the power flickered. You'll hear glass break. And later on, you find out you know, exactly what caused those things. But as I was talking about before, when you pick up an item, uh, other than the cards, other than the cards, you, um, oh, this actually go back real fast if I can make it, hopefully. The cards stay with you forever. You do not lose the cards. Any kind of collectible item. The only other collectible that I know of is invitations that you can pick up. Now, each, each guest, and I think there's seven guests, has, uh, has one card. I think I missed, might have missed it. That's her. Yeah, see, they're great. So they both died. Now, we don't know how they died yet because we didn't stick around with, with either one of them to watch and see what happened. So let's go in here. This is where he was drinking, I think. Oh, yep. Well, he's dead. That's not good. But we can grab this card. And again, that's just a robot. So we don't have to worry uh, too much about that. We can go over here and check him. Oh, we got his invitation. So, I mean, he's dead. But, you know, that's fine. So you can see the clock starting to go crazy over here again. The day restarts at midnight. So generally speaking, the process is this. A day starts and you have to walk around. You have to find out the people you're find the people you're trying to save. Find out where the employees are because it's the employees who are doing the, the murdering. So it's obvious who to look out for. So the first day you're trying to figure out, okay, where are my people at? Where are the people that I'm trying to save? What's their pattern? Where are they going? What are they saying? What are the employees around them saying and doing? And kind of figuring out all the paths and what have you. So let's actually go back now. And again, we kept our cards. So even though there was a new day, we got to keep the cards. However, if I had to pick something up, like let's say I had to pick up a book or a key or something like that. When the day ends, you lose the key because, well, the day's restarted, right? So you don't have that key. And that stays consistent most of the time. Now, on occasion, there are times where that doesn't take place. However, you should also note, like make a mental note when that happens. Because if for some reason an item doesn't reset on the day, that means that item is, is special in some way. And obviously there is like something more going on. Like why are these employees trying to kill these people? And of course, these are the two people we're trying to save. So we're going to let them kind of converse here and kind of watch to see what they're doing. Actually, you know what? Here, let's do this. I've got an idea. While we wait. Now, here's one kind of thing that makes this game a little bit too easy. I talked about how if you were in the same room as one of the guards, your, you know, your face lights up and their mask like floats up and tries to attack you. So let's, let's turn this camera on. Oh, whoops. Let's actually turn that back off for very specific reasons. Oh, nope. Uh, okay, we were lighting up because somebody was coming in. So let's actually watch and see what happens this time. I'm sorry, but you're not allowed. This room is off limits. Off limits? Since when are rooms off limits? Well, it's a surprise, ma'am. Ah, now what have I said? Dash it all. A surprise? Oh, don't worry. I wouldn't want to ruin any surprises. I wish you sounded more sincere, ma'am. I can virtually hear something's up. This music's gonna get stuck in your head, by the way. So we can't hear it, or we can't see it from here. And there's no camera in there to turn on. So you can kind of cheese this a little bit. So I know the guy's coming in here, right? So I can just sit here and wait, and then click the door as soon as he comes in. Oh, and now she's in here. So we actually want to, uh, you know what? I wanna go in here. I actually don't remember how to do this puzzle now. Hold on. And also time stops whenever this happens. So you can actually abuse this a little bit. So let's actually watch again. Let's see what she says. I thought she... Mm. thought she actually... Okay. We might have to restart the day again.
Because as I was going to say, I think we watched her go all the way in last time. Now we also can pop in here, and even though we can't go in there, I think there's a peak hole, which doesn't seem like a very secure thing. So she's hanging out in there. We're not going to watch this whole sequence again because there's there's some fairly interesting spoilers in here. All right. So we kind of messed that up, I think. So let's do this. We're going to restart the day. Because I think we have to hear the beginning of that conversation that she kind of has with herself. I don't really know how much of a conversation that is. Actually, you know what? I think I have an even better idea. Let's check this first. And again, we have time because everything's restarting fresh. So we are actually going to go over here. And I want to see if there's a camera down. Because there's a third keypad. There's no camera. Basically, what I'm trying to do is find a camera with a keypad. Uh, but we don't need this one. Or uh, this keypad. Ah, but there's not one here either. Now I've completely forgotten how I solved this puzzle. Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it, I don't think we have to have that puzzle. I don't think we have to have it. In fact, no, I know that we do not. So that is actually totally fine. All right, so let's spy. Let's do a little bit more spying. Oh, whoops, we don't want to be in here. That's all. I love this indicator, by the way, this flaming indicator, because it's really like, especially when you first open up a new section of the house, you're kind of wanting to explore quickly on your first day to try to catch people where they are. It's really nice to have that indicator. That way you don't have to like wait and peek every time and go, is there anybody in there? Okay, there's not, oops, always hit escape. There's not anybody in there, okay, I can shift out. You can just walk up to it and if your face flashes, you know to peek. If it doesn't flash, you know that you can just go into that room. I like that quite a bit. Let's actually go in here because she's about to come in there. And we'll spy on her a little bit. So let's look in here. Let's look in the menu. The map's pretty darn interesting. So you have a map of all the places that you've discovered. It also will show you a gray outline of places you haven't found yet. Now you have here, I forget what they call this thing, like a time scanner or some time scrubber, I think is what it's called. And you can't actually change the current time, but you can move this timer. It will keep up with the positions of NPCs that you know the locations of. In other words, if you've seen that person in that area at that time, you can actually watch them. So I've seen those people, we can bump the time up and you can see there's little gaps here, right? Cause we didn't actually see her go over there. But then later on, we did see her and this ties all together. So the first time I think I saw her over here and then like the second or third time I see her down here and it ties it all together automatically, which is really nice. So again, as we kind of progress, we can see what they're doing. This guy comes out, she backs out. She's found the code somehow. And then we saw her go in there. We looked at her for a little while and then we kind of passed on it. And again, we see, we ended up coming down here. You get the idea. That's really handy. I didn't have to use it, end up using it a whole lot because miraculously, I mostly remember where they were. But if you're quickly trying to get from one place to another, sometimes this is handy if you don't want to run into them along the way. But like I said, running into them is not really a big deal because they just don't, really cause a problem, right? You can just run past them and mostly ignore them. Cause like I said, I've run right by two people and the closest, lowest I got was like 80% health. So I think it'd be quite difficult to actually die. The only thing you can't do is if there's objects in the room, like if you want to pick something up, you can't do that while they're in the room. You have to wait till they leave. So I hit spacebar and I can show the like special things that we found. These are the CCTV code entry points where we can turn cameras on and off, which may or may not be useful for this puzzle, which I'm not going to show you the solution to the puzzle. Cause again, I, I want to show you the mechanics and then you, because again, if you're going to play the game, I don't want, uh, don't want spoilers for you. Uh, let's check the inventory. As you pick items up, they pop into your inventory. As you might imagine, key items are items that you always get to keep. You never drop these items. Like just because the day's over, you keep these anyway, cause they are special. You don't ever really have a ton of items on you at any given time. So you're not walking around with five or six different items that you normally would have in an adventure game and just poking them against like every, every interactable that you can. That doesn't really happen in this game. In most cases, in fact, all cases I can think of, 
once I found the item I needed, it was fairly obvious where I was supposed to. I was never to the point where I'm just using random items, combining them with various world objects, like you, again, do in a lot of adventure games. This is your general progress screen. It shows you the current people that you're trying to help, their names and whatnot. And as it progresses, you see their pictures. You unlock more mask power, like this one allows you to work with clocks. Another one that you get later on gives you extreme hearing so that you can hear people talk through doors, even if you're not peephole, and allows you to hear them while they're whispering, things like that. And these are the collectibles, uh, cards, and invitations. There are 52 cards I found. I didn't look too hard for the cards, and I found like 47, or I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, about 47 of them, so almost all of them. Uh, invitations, I had about six of i think so those were a little those can be a little bit trickier to find the brochures this is background information uh, this tells you more about the various guests uh, you can also get more detailed information about the rooms none of i would say the vast majority of the information here is not critical you don't have to have it but it's it's nice for you know just kind of background information trying to piece together the mystery because again obviously there's something else going on behind the scenes here and you're trying to figure out exactly what that is so this gives the backstory of what's going on your full options here not really a lot you've got your language options you can control the sound effects volume and the music volume that's pretty much it uh, i think in the main menu or the launcher i think i did pick my my resolution i think once but other than that obviously not not a lot of uh not a lot of options to, to go through there. And I'm trying to actually think of just about anything else I wanted to cover. One thing I do want to say, though, as we wrap up here, is that I really like this game. I mean, I finished the whole thing. Yeah, it was only eight hours, but I was compelled to keep playing. Uh, I wanted to keep playing. I wanted to keep checking stuff out. I wanted to see what the mystery was. And like I say, I played until that happened. We can actually watch him die. Hooray, That's that'll be fun. But um, let me see, I'm trying to run through my list here of things to, to, to carry. I feel like I didn't really cover that much of the game, and I feel like you might walk away with the impression, like, ah, oh, there's not really a whole lot here. The, the time mechanic is really, really interesting. Uh, it, it creates some... It creates an interesting scenario where you're timed. You've got to do these things within a certain time limit, but there's no real penalty if you don't do it within that time limit. You just play through that day again. And... There's enough time there once you know what you need to do. Yes, you might need to do it pretty quickly, but again, I don't feel like you have to click and get there within, you know, one to two seconds of a, of a window. It's fairly generous, again, once you kind of know what's, what's happening. He's taking another drink. I'm sure he'll be fine. Yeah, he looks like he can handle his drinks. He's totally, totally cool. But I really like this game. the The music's pretty uh, is is good and catchy. Like I had this this little de -de 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 -de. I had that in my head all freaking day. Just just so you know, game developers, in case you're listening to that, uh, I I could not get it out of my head for good or for ill. But uh, the pacing is pretty slow. In that you have to backtrack a pretty good bit. You have to you know you have to run through the same areas multiple times because. You have to see where both your the people you're trying to save are going and you also need to see where the the murderers are going in a lot of cases because you need to see how they're going to be killed you know you need to see how the kills being set up and then figure out how you can prevent that now typically i would say for each person to save i had to restart the day on average maybe like four times uh, like this one I actually got really lucky on. I actually got this one I think the very first time, I believe. I think this one is very generous though with the, the time frame as well. It is only the first one you're... This is the first mission you're kind of doing by yourself though. So this one's very generous and I think that's probably why I got it on the first try. Uh, excluding this one, on average I probably had to restart like five times. So again, it's not bad. Uh, it's not a ton of backtracking, but it could be a little little bit slow for some folks when you're having to kind of run through the same rooms over and over again to, to try something different or to check the status of something like that. So be, be aware that it is a slower pace, but again, it wasn't so slow that I was really uh, bored. 
Um, like I said before, it kind of blocks you to certain areas that you can't really do anything yet because you don't have the powers or whatnot. However, again, you can just kind of circle back later and come back to these, I guess you could call them older rooms as you progress to the mansion. But generally, you don't have a huge reason for it. It does a good job, I'd say, of keeping you pinned in, so to speak, in areas that you need to be so that you're not just wandering all over the place trying to find the, the mansion again or find the answer to a puzzle. That never happened to me. As long as I stayed mostly within the area that I needed to stay, I never had a problem with not being able to find what I needed to solve the puzzle after, you know, after given some time of poking around and, and trying to think on it, things like that. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, overall, I really like the look. I love the aesthetic. Uh, it's not really so much here, but I tend to like that kind of uh, diorama type look. And this, this, this map doesn't look that much like it, but some maps kind of have that look to it. And I really like it. I like the characters. They're pretty interesting. There's not a lot of depth to them. They're kind of semi-stereotypical type characters-ish, sort of. You don't really get much time to know them before they get killed off. But I think characters are, are fairly interesting. I like the look. I like the music. It looks really good. It runs really well. I kept it 60 frames per second the entire time with no problems. The puzzles are not very difficult. You'll figure them out pretty quickly, I think, uh, for the most part. I also like the listening in on conversations. A lot of times you don't need to look in on the conversation or listen to every single conversation. You just, like, it just kind of gives you background. Now, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Like, all of this conversation that's going on right now is more of more of background noise. And like I said, this one gives you quite a bit of time in order to, to rescue the two. Which, again, it's only your second mission, so it makes sense. This, I, I actually, this is the first time I'm seeing this dialogue, because like I said, I actually kind of did this accidentally i wasn't expecting it and i i solved it so i missed a lot of this dialogue but i do like the eavesdropping aspects uh, some of the dialogue is is fairly amusing nothing no knee slappers but uh it was it was pretty pretty entertaining one thing i would say i was disappointed in is that i thought there was multiple ways that you could save people like say for example if somebody's going to get shot Maybe one option would be to replace the bullets with dummy bullets. Another would be to, you know, steal the gun ahead of time or lock it or, you know, drop a safe on the person when they go to get the gun or something along those lines. But each puzzle only has one solution. It's not a big negative. I was just under the impression when I came in that there was going to be multiple solutions for whatever reason I had that impression. Uh, and it really wasn't the case. I think that's the important drink there. Oh, yep, I think that one might have been a one too many. And that's all she wrote. For that guy. Poor lad. They also died around the same time. How poetic, because I think they are husband and wife. But um, but yeah, this, I sorry, like I say, I hate that I I was really struggling with myself how much of this game to show. Because on one hand, you know, you need to see the mechanics, you kind of need to see how they work, things like that. But on the other hand, if you show too much, you, you know, it kind of ruins part of it. And I feel like there's, it's almost like there's not quite enough puzzles that if I showed you how to do it, it would kind of ruin, ruin part of it. But just know that, like I guess it, I really enjoyed the game. I like the, I like the, as they kind of call it, the Groundhog Day effect where you just keep playing the same thing over and over, or uh, keep playing the same day over and over. And it's cool to see how it plays out because as you progress, again, you'll run into these people that you saved earlier walking around. Now they'll still get killed because remember, because the day's starting over, the, the things you did before aren't really affecting them, but you still get to progress. And I'm trying to be vague on purpose, again, for, for spoiler reasons. But you'll see them walking around and you're like, oh, that person's about to drink acid or, oh, that person is about to be shot, you know, in a few minutes. And you hear the gunshot. You're like, oh, yep, that's that person getting shot that I saved about two hours ago. But uh, yeah, this is quite the good little game. It, it is 20 bucks. I like I actually didn't know the price. And when I finished it, I was like, I felt like, you know what? This is about a $20 game. And sure enough, it was a $20 game. I really like this. It was quite fun. I hope I showed you enough to really understand the mechanics because, again, 
I was trying to find that happy medium between showing you the mechanics and uh, and not spoiling anything. So hopefully I did that today. In the comments below, let me know. If you have any questions, definitely ask. I will do that without spoilers. But uh, yeah, definitely let me know what you thought in the video or in the comments section below. Also, if you like the video, go ahead and give it a like. That does help me out a bunch. If you'd like to see more games covered like this that you may not have seen, make sure to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching and make sure to check out the Sexy Brutal. Again, links will be in the video description. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.